Hello everyone, welcome to the course on computer aided drug design. Today we are going to talk about uh, target identification and lead identification. So, where do target and lead identification come in our overall process? Um, yesterday I showed you a, a nice interesting slide, okay. uh, this particular slide where we use uh, a lot of uh, in silico methods where we have the target identification that is the target protein or enzyme which you are looking at, okay, the target protein enzyme and then trying to know the active site uh, and so on. And then once you have got a target, we go into the lead, lead is your molecule has to have certain activity uh, that means it goes and bind to the enzyme and make it inactive, it goes and binds to a protein and uh, denatures the protein so on actually that is called the lead identification. So, we are going to talk about um, the various steps involved in uh, target identification and lead identification. Okay. Um, and then later on we will talk about uh, the drug likeness property and so on. So, if you look at uh, some statistics 1989 to 2000 statistics uh, as you can see uh, NME is new molecular entities that means totally new uh, species new compounds uh, which has gone for approval um, only about 15 percent has gone for an approval as a priority and about 20 percent as standard uh, new molecular entities for approval from the FDA. Okay. Uh, then uh, we have about 6 percent that is called IMD that is incremental modified drug. Uh, already a drug has been approved, uh, you make certain changes maybe you convert it uh, uh, from a liquid form to solid form or change the crystallization uh, procedure and so on. Okay. So, that is called the incremental. So, most of it as you can see here incremental standard IMDs, priority IMDs uh, almost 60 70 percent is that. So, you have a old active ingredient and you make some modification. So, here uh, there is not much uh, invention whereas, uh, these uh, new molecular entities are inventive that means totally new compounds. So, about only 35 percent of the uh, drugs that come into FDA approval are uh, new molecular species whereas, rest of them are incremental uh, improvements value. So, the traditionally how the drug discovery was uh, followed if you look at it uh, what happened was uh, researchers in universities, biotech companies or pharmaceutical companies they started screening small molecules for disease. So, there is a pharma company which is in, interested in uh, a colorectal cancer. So, they started screening lot of compounds. Uh, if there is a academic institution um, they synthesize lot of molecules and then test it out for some inflammation. So, that is how traditionally drug discovery was followed that is a very traditional approach. Um, whereas, uh, the current approach is totally different they are all based on target based approach that means, uh, we try to look at the target identify the target and then uh, validate small molecules that have specific activity against a specific target protein. So, that is very very important specific um, the molecule which you design should be very specific to the particular target protein or enzyme it should be uh, not binding to other targets or other proteins enzymes uh, because then uh, we will say uh, it may cause side effects. So, the specificity is low. So, the most important thing is I need to know the target. Uh, if I am looking at uh, say inflammation um, I am looking at an enzyme called cyclooxygenase 2. So, I am designing molecules for cyclooxygenase 2 that is what uh, it means actually. Okay. So, um, it is very very specific. So, the drug targets has to be known very well. So, for example, uh, you want uh, the particular drug go and bind to that uh, target and make the target inactive. So, that there are three steps target identification and validation. So, you need to identify there could be many um, enzymes and proteins in the pathway of inflammation, but you are interested in one particular enzyme which you want to inhibit. Okay. So, you identify that uh, there could be pharma companies working on different targets in the same uh, inflammatory pathway that is also possible. And then you need to validate you have to be very sure that is the target um, by doing different types of uh, experimental studies as well as modeling studies we will talk about some of them. 
and then you design lead compounds like I said a compound does not become a drug unless it goes through all the clinical trials preclinical as well as human volunteer trials. So, the lead uh, what you do is you test out thousands and thousands and thousands of compounds on that particular target and um, try to find one or two which seems to be very promising and then you need to optimize the lead that means what does that mean optimize the lead it is not that only activity is important like I said um, it, the drug has to be soluble in the stomach it should be stable at that pH it should have good absorption through the GI into the bloodstream it should have a good distribution throughout it should not metabolize degrade inside because of uh, the enzymes in the liver. Um, so, the active ingredient should be sufficiently of higher concentration to reach the target and do its job and finally, uh, it should get excreted from the body it should not stay in the body for a long time at the same time it should not cause uh, toxicity short term toxicity and long term. So, uh, when you do lead optimization you need to balance the activity as well as the various drug likeness properties. So, the very best compound from your lab might not have all these drug likeness property Maybe uh, it is not very stable at pH of 2 that is your uh, stomach pH whereas, the second best compound may satisfy all these properties. Uh, so, you may try to select the second best compound and take it further into the uh, preclinical and clinical trial. So, this entire process is called lead optimization. So, all these have to be done. So, it is like a balance between activity versus other properties like drug likeness, ADME, toxicity, side effects, stability all these things. We are going to look at all of them in detail later. So, target identification and validation it could be broken down into uh, several, several steps ok genomics. So, I need to know what are the genes which get upregulated if I have a disease what are the or the structural features of that and then try to identify what is the protein um, that is involved. Um, so, I need to purify the protein, uh, I need to get the uh, structural details 3D structure details of the protein, I need to um, I get the active site details. So, I need to do all these that is what is target identification and validation means actually. So, um, we first look at the gene that is involved in that particular place we look at the proteins and do I have a three dimensional structure of the protein um, or can I uh, get the three dimensional structure using x ray crystallography do I know the active site uh, I need to confirm or validate whether that is the active site uh, then <coughs> all these are called target identification. Once I have a target and once I have validated that particular target then you need to identify a lead. So, you may test millions and millions of compounds that is the in silico structure based design. So, I take millions and millions of compounds and then try to uh, dock it ok. The docking means uh, we try to uh, see whether the compound binds to the active side of the target, how it binds is the binding very good um, you do all those things that is called in silico approach ok. Um, we can also do in vitro approach I take uh, thousands of compounds and test out on that particular uh, protein and see uh, which compound or compounds have very very high inhibitory activity against that protein that is called in vitro approach ok. Uh, once I am satisfied with the one or two um, which has the drug likeness property then I may go into the in vivo that is the uh, animal studies. Of course, I need to simultaneously do the lead optimization do not forget that um, because I may find uh, the best uh, lead molecule does not have the drug likeness property. So, I will make a modify the structure and so that the uh, drug likeness properties are improved or maybe the toxicity is reduced or maybe the side effects are reduced maybe it becomes more specific or solubility is increased. So, that is all the lead optimization. Um, simultaneously I will also have to know the toxicity I can uh, do it on animals or I can do it on cell lines different types of cell lines are available uh, on which I can uh, study these uh, um, toxicity of uh, the compound. So, that is lead optimization in fact, uh, lead optimization and lead identification sort of uh, get merged as soon as you find one 
or two compounds identified we have to keep on optimizing around that so that all the properties are also satisfied in addition to the activate ok. Uh, Let us go more in detail. So, if I want to know the target first I need to understand the disease mechanism ok. So, I am um, saying I am in interested in inflammation um, how does the inflammation progress there are uh, something called uh, prostaglandins there are something called leukotrienes. Um, so, there are many enzymes in the prostaglandin pathway and there are many enzymes the leukotriene pathway. Uh, so, I am trying to uh, inhibit one of those enzymes. So, I need to understand the disease mechanism by based on a cellular genetic approach ok. So, that uh, I can decide on a particular target. There could be many targets because if you look at the prostaglandin pathway in inflammation um, there are many enzymes cyclooxygenase 2, prostaglandin E synthase 1 and so on actually ok. Similarly, leukotriene you may have uh, lipoxygenase. So, there are many enzymes which uh, we can target ok. Um, then I need to know the develop concerning the disease etiology whether the disease can be targeted that is also very important. So, there could be some places where the disease can be targeted for example, HIV replication uh, within T cells. So, I could target there ok. So, there could be some diseases you might not find a target um, ok then you are in trouble. Understand the disease mechanism to narrow down on a particular target ok. So, uh, once you understand the disease mechanism uh, there could be many targets you may have to focus on one target. For example, uh, HIV proteases are known to be important for replication. So, maybe this could be my target that is an example and like I am tell, talking about inflammation uh, there could be enzymes in the prostaglandin pathway uh, which lead to uh, inflammation. So, those could be the target. Then I need to now do genomics and proteomics. I need to get the gene sequence and gene expression data for the disease tissue when compared to normal tissue. I need to know uh, which genes get upregulated, which genes get downregulated um, when there is a disease condition vis a vis the normal condition ok. So, if the genes and proteins are highly expressed in disease tissues, but their expression is very low in normal tissues then that could be the target for therapy ok. So, I could focus on those genes which get ok. Then I need to validate. So, I need to validate means I need to do some in vitro studies experimental studies. So, I can do some cell based study I can use different types of cells cancer cells if I am looking at cancer inflammation I could take a cells and uh, create inflammation or induce inflammation ok and then check them out ok. Uh, whether those things happen whether the genes get upregulated or downregulated based on diseased versus normal cells. So, that is called the validation. So, I have to be very sure based on in vitro studies. Now, look at the lead once assume I have done that target. So, what do I do? Uh, I need to design this lead ok. I need to design this lead ok. How do I do? There are many many steps involved in that. Um, so, for example, if a molecule goes and binds to a protein or enzyme uh, there could be changes uh, maybe in the color uh, fluorescence radioactivity. So, I could measure that and that could be a measure of the activity of this lead uh, with respect to the control. So, I could screen large number of uh, leads and uh, make measurements accordingly ok. That is called the lead. So, I need to develop an assay that means an experimental procedure assay is nothing but an experimental procedure to measure the activity of the compounds that affects the target. So, when the compound goes and binds to um, an active site of a protein or it goes and binds to an enzyme there is a change um, colorimetry fluorescence radioactivity or some change biochemical change which I could measure either using a bacteria or I can use a animal cell in my lab ok that is a biochemical assay. I need to develop that assay if I want to do experiments on testing out different molecules um, to the uh, inhibition of a particular target. For example, so I can say this particular compound inhibits this protein ok. I can say aspirin goes and inhibits the cyclooxygenase 2 enzyme 
and affects uh, inflammatory pathway like that. So, but then the most important thing is I need to have an experimental assay uh, which can be done in my lab. So, that means I need to have that particular protein purified, uh, then I need to test a large number of compounds, um, in, uh, incubate each of the compound with that particular protein and measure changes, some uh, physical chemical changes, biochemical changes that is happening um, and then identify the activity of that compound with respect to the control. Control means uh, without any of the compound. Okay. So, um, that is how I test out large number of uh, lead molecules. These are called screening, screen compounds that have activity against this particular target. So, if you take biotech and pharmaceutical companies, they will have large uh, small molecule libraries, uh, they will have FDA approved drugs non FDA approved drug candidates. So, so many candidates may be there in their library. So, they quickly start screening all of them um, in their lab. So, that is an in vitro type of approach and see um, which ones look very, very promising that is the lead identification, okay. which one uh, gives a best hit. Okay. So, that is how you do it in vitro. You can also do in silico dock all these molecules to this particular target and identify those which shows best binding to the target in the active side of the enzyme. Okay, that also can be done that is called in silico. So, I could combine in silico and in vitro, uh, I take uh, thousands and thousands of um, molecule structures um, and then I bind them or dock them to the active site of the target and see which ones bind very well and take only those and then perform experiments in vitro experiments in my lab uh, to see whether uh, they show good activity. So, thereby I can reduce um, testing out millions of compound um, in the in vitro studies which could be very expensive time consuming and so on. I use uh, computational in silico method screen them, um, dock them to the target and uh, select maybe hundreds of them which look very promising and then take those hundreds, take it to my wet lab and perform biochemical assays and identify a lead. Okay. So, instead of uh, testing out millions of compounds in um, my wet lab which is time consuming expensive, I could use this in silico screening method um, and then select only hundreds which look very promising and then test it out in vitro using uh, high throughput screening that is called uh, HTS high throughput screening and then identify some uh, lead molecules uh, which seems to be very promising okay. that is called the lead identification. So, they reduce the number of compounds to test from very large um, using computational in silico methods. Okay. So, that uh, we can use this as a screening tool the docking of uh, a large number of lead molecules to the active site and just picking up a few of them will look promising that is a in silico screening that is called. Okay. Uh, then we can use high throughput screens that is HTS, uh, so we can do large number of uh, uh, activity studies using that, it saves a lot of time, um, it, that it could be a biochemical based or a cell based screens. Okay. And then after that, uh, if there are some promising candidates, we can do more experiments, take this uh, and then we can do animal studies or we can do more assays. So, initially you test out large number of compounds using high throughput screening and then the candidates which look very promising, you spend more time, do in depth studies, um, biochemical in depth, more biochemical assays or even validate with uh, animals. Okay. And then comes the lead optimization. Okay, so, now you have uh, uh, looked at uh, one or two candidates or maybe few candidates which look very promising which has now good activity, but then uh, as I have been telling um, uh, it should also have lower toxicity, it should have good stability, uh, temperature, pH, safety. So, that is where the lead optimization comes into picture. So, a compound uh, which is very, very active may be very toxic that happens in uh, cancer 
because uh, drugs um, uh, for uh, chemotherapy are not only uh, very active in killing um, cancerous cells, but it can even kill uh, normal cells. Okay, so it's very highly toxic. Um, whereas, say second best compound, that means compound which is not as active as the first one, may have better uh, stability or less toxicity or a better pH uh, stability and so on. Actually, so that's the lead optimization part which we do. Uh, so we we can collect data from uh, um, maybe cell based studies or maybe even animal studies. Uh, understand the metabolism of these compounds, whether the compound uh, is stable at pH, whether the compound is stable in the liver region uh, and so on. Maybe the best compound is very unstable because of the uh, action of the liver, maybe the second best compound may be more stable and so on actually. So, we can either uh, shortlist uh, one or two which not only satisfies the activity, reasonably good activity, but also quite stable. Okay. Uh, so, that is called the lead optimization. Okay. Uh, okay. These information of course, uh, is very very important before we go into preclinical that means animal studies um, or before we go into human volunteers. So, new strategies when compared to the older drug design strategies, design of novel drug candidate based on the target site information. Um, based on the structural features of the molecule, we are going to spend lot of time on pharmacophore later. This is called the structural features, maybe the molecule has uh, some uh, special structural features like uh, hydroxyl groups or molecule has certain uh, um, acidic groups or maybe it has got a heterocycle group okay, um, which gives that activity. So, we I try to identify that. Uh, of course, the target protein we try to uh, model that, um, we also look at how compounds interact uh, or uh, bind to the protein uh, and how do we get the structure of this protein by x-ray crystallography. So, these are new strategies that have come into in the drug design as against the traditional drug design in the past 15 to 20 years, uh, a lot of these computational tools and um, um, new uh, analytical tools have come into the drug design. Okay, so, um, let us go more in detail on this uh, identifying novel targets using genomic approach, using proteomic approach. So, what do we do in genomic? We look at the RNA sample, we take a sample of the RNA, uh, then we uh, run a PCR using labeling, PCR you must have all studied polymerase chain reaction okay, and then look at the sample to chip and then array and data analysis. Whereas, in a proteomics approach we are looking at the proteins. So, we take a protein sample, uh, we separate out the protein mixture uh, using a 2D two dimensional gel based on isoelectric focusing, okay. uh, isoelectric focusing that is the pH at which uh, the protein uh, uh, charge is 0 that is the isoelectric point and then a page. Uh, which is based on molecular weight. So, the um, protein is separated, the protein mixture is separated based on the isoelectric pH as well as based on the molecular weight. Okay. Then take that particular protein uh, and then perform a um, mass spectrometer analysis um, try and then try to identify the protein molecular weight, protein sequence that is called the proteomics approach. Okay. In the genomics approach, you look at the gene. Uh, then go through a PCR, uh, make an array and then data analysis here you um, isolate one protein from a protein mixture and then uh, try to um, get the protein sequence, the amino acid sequence and the molecular weight using mass spectrometer analysis. Okay. Uh, then the genetic approach look at the candidate gene, uh, then look at the single nucleotide polymorphism uh, and then look at the genotyping of the DNA and then you analyze the data. So, there are different ways of uh, identifying your target. Once you have identified the target, we need to do target validation. So, how do I do that? I need to modify that particular activity of the protein to be sure whether that is the protein which is involved in the disease phenotype. Okay? So, what do we do? Uh, we knock out that particular protein, we, we have transgenic animals, they are called transgenic animals, animals 
uh, which have certain proteins of interest knocked out. Okay, so, for example, uh, if I am interested in uh, diabetics, I may um, have animals which uh, have uh, the insulin protection knocked out. Okay. Okay, then I can be very sure that is the target or I can have a RNA interference technique where the protein expression, protein is after all expressed uh, through the gene. So, the protein expression is silenced at the post transcriptional level that means the protein is not produced and then you study because all these techniques are needed to be very sure that that is the protein uh, which is involved in that particular disease. Another approach is called intracellular antibody capture technology. So, you select antibodies that will directly target the protein as you know antibody antigen antibodies are very very selective to that particular target. Um, so, it will go and bind to that protein of interest. So, that protein is not available and then see how the disease progresses. So, that is third approach. Then you have the fourth approach. Uh, so, we can turn off protein function in the cellular system or in the domains by chromophore assisted laser inactivation. So, we turn off protein. the protein is produced, but its function is uh, turned off okay, by this particular approach. The fifth approach is protein and antibody microarray used for screening of protein interaction and its function. Okay. This is the fifth approach. So, large number of approaches are available for target validation. So, first is target you have to decide on that target, target identification, the, but then you have to be very, very sure, but that is your target of interest. Okay. So, there are many steps knocking out the gene which stops the production of the protein, um, then uh, the protein expression is silenced and then uh, protein uh, you produce antibodies which will go and uh, bind to that particular protein very specific. Uh, so, that uh, protein is not available uh, you turn off the protein function by using uh, um, external techniques and then uh, you look at a large number of uh, micro arrays. Um, so, that you will get a protein antibody um, interaction and that way you will validate your target a large number of approaches are available. Uh, another approach uh, this is called the forward genetics and there is a reverse genetics by which we can also identify your uh, protein, uh, disease phenotype. Okay. So, what we do is we look at the complementary DNA library in a retroviral vector uh, infection converts this retroviral into intracellular library. Uh, so, you get the disease related phenotype. Then we have a chemical library. Uh, exposure of these cells to the chemical library and then from there you identify the gene. Okay. So, we can simultaneously have mouse uh, mutagens uh, and then we, from the phenotypic analysis we can identify the gene. This is called the forward approach that means you create uh, a particular uh, infection and then study. In the reverse approach, okay, so you do the other way actually. So, we have the how a mouse small mammal of the order of or a zebra fish or rosophila um, or uh, okay, C. elegans, uh, saccharomyces or yeast and then we perform a knockout or mutation of the selective gene and then look at the phenotypic analysis. So, here we do not know which gene needs to be knocked out to up arrive at that particular phenotype. So, you may have a trial and error type approach. This is the reverse approach. So, there are different uh, approaches one is called the forward approach genetic approach the other is called the reverse genetic approach for identifying potential disease target through the modulation of a disease phenotype. So, this is also a long winding approach as you can see you can test it out on small mammal zebra fish rosophila C. elegans um, yeast saccharomyces and get the phenotypic analysis done actually. Okay. So, um, computers can be widely used in the drug discovery um, as um, we are going to uh, learn in the next um, lecture set of lectures um, target identification at the molecular level understanding of a specific disease state. Um, then look at the gene sequence, protein structure, metabolic pathway, then uh, structure prediction 
we can predict the three dimensional structure um, of uh, the target uh, using uh, different types of uh, um, bioinformatics tool. Then uh, we can look at the active site because it is not only the three dimensional structure of the protein, I need to know the active site of the protein on into which my particular uh, uh, lead will go and bind and make the protein inactive. So, I can use computational tools for active site prediction. Uh, then uh, lead identification and optimization using um, pharmacophore model, de novo design, ligand protein binding studies, QSAR that is quantitative structure activity relation, quantitative structure property relation, all the lead identification optimization techniques. Um, then um, toxicity prediction, there are uh, softwares now which can predict toxicity based on QSPR. So, they also have something called a QSTR, quantitative structure toxicity prediction. And then um, metabolism, can I predict the degradation of uh, the uh, drug into various products. So, all these are possible um, using computational tools. So, we can identify targets, we can predict the three dimensional structure of the uh, target protein, we can identify or predict the active site into which my uh, leads will go and bind to, then I can use computational tools for lead identification, uh, lead optimization, uh, then I can use it for toxicity predictions and then I can use it for uh, metabolism, I, uh, that means I can predict the degradation products, then uh, I can predict its excretion from the body and so on actually. So, um, many, many tools computational tools are available um, in the drug design process and we are going to cover some of them as I said uh, in the forthcoming classes. Okay. Thank you very much for your time.